Hello everyone, uh, this is Coach Oliver once again. Um, I was actually about to sleep when I saw this uh, young sensation, Alice Lee, playing against Chulakido in the playoffs of the US, uh, the American Cup, yep, uh, the women's section. And I was very impressed with this young kid, young 12 year old girl. Yeah. But like, okay, I, I shouldn't miss this one and I will share it to you guys. Okay, in the first game of the playoff in the Rapid, I saw he was white. She was not sorry, she was white. Okay, she played D4. She's playing an international matter and also a woman grandmaster. Stabrula Chilakido, who's a very talented young lady as well, who won the world youth under 14, 16, and 18. Uh, and is also one of the top players in uh, women's chess in Greece. All right, so let's continue. Alice went for C4. Alice in Wonderland. E6, knight into C3, knight of six, takes, takes, bishop G5, C6, E3, bishop into E7, bishop to D3, knight to D7, queen C2. So we have this Carlsbad structure of the QGB, the queen's gambit declined, right here. Castles, knight GE2. Rook into e8, castles, knight f8, rook ad1, b5, f3. Typical of the Budvinic system. Yeah. White tries to go for knight g3 and will go for e4 later on. Or he would go, or she would go for h3 and then e4. That's the point of f3. H6 bishop into h4, knight e6. Black doesn't allow this e4 move, so he keeps, she keeps the pressure on the d4 pawn. Alice went for bishop f2, bishop to b7, last piece to develop. h3. Okay, the main point of h3 is that if uh, you push e4, for example, takes an e4, takes an e4. Black gets this knight g4 square to attack your bishop on f2. So it was important for white to. Keep an eye on a g4 square, so for h3. And black one for knight h5. Nice move. Okay, the main thing here, again, if you play e4, he has this knight e4. Right, takes an f4, takes an f4. He takes this light square bishop. So that's the reason why white played g4, although very optimistic. He could, she, no, sorry, she could play bishop h7 here, king h8, and then bishop f5. This is a much better version of the game. And then with this structure, it's nice to develop this knight back to c1 and try to go for knight d3 or knight d3, keep an eye on c5 and e5. For example, bishop here can go for knight c1. All right, she went for g4. Knight addresses king g2, bishop g3. Knight e4. This is typical in this f3 system. You have to push c5, central break. The rook on c8. Black's actually better now. Takes, takes. Bishop into f5, hitting the rook on c8. Knight into e6, queen d2. Okay, isolated pawn on d5. Doesn't matter. There's a bishop in b7, there's a knight in f6. This pawn is also a target later on in the game. Queen to d7, hitting the knight on a4, b3, g6. All right, getting, getting rid of the pin on this diagonal. Bishop goes back to b1, bishop c6. Knight goes back to b2, a5. Knight e3, bishop b5. Knight into e5, queen to b7. F2, moving out of the pin. King g7 was played. It was also possible for black to just capture this knight on e2. Right, so that he can infiltrate the position where the rook 
So she can, sorry, she. It's a battle of women. <laughs> okay, rook c3. Yeah. Pressure on d3. King of queen d6. King of bishop c5. Pressure. And also this rook e to c8. Okay, shot for king g7. The young Alice went for h4. Bishop c5, knight e4. Takes, takes. Rook c3. Rook h1, over optimistic. Better with this rook e1. Yeah. And the main point of rook e1 is that you don't allow this rook to move to c8. Because with the rook on e1, you have knight hg6, so keep an eye on that knight on e6. Okay, he, she wanted to go maybe g5 here. Yeah. Queen b6, hitting d4. Rook d1. With this rook on c3 and an overworked pawn on b4, you could go a4 here to improve that position of the pawn at bishop a6. Then continue with the plan g5 here. If let's say takes, it takes on g5. If knight h5, then rook takes h5. It takes on h5, then knight to d7. We think d4 is not possible because of bishop e5. And if, if the opponent does not take on g5, for example, knight h5, this takes on h6. Yeah? It's a big problem. Problematic pawn with h7 and king g8. She was worried about the pawn and d4. Okay, the main point, by the way, of a4 is to take away this d7 square later on. So the bishop is protecting that square. And then g5, right? With the Aldenite on f6, you have 97 coming up. Okay, but it's, of course, it's understandable in, in a rapid game or in a blitz game, it's hard to find precise moves. Yeah. You go by instincts. Like group d1, obviously, just to protect d4, yeah. Playing obvious moves, especially when you're low on time. You can forgive the players for doing it. It's, it's part of the game. And there's pressure. Okay, f4, not e4. f4 was just a mistake. And it's important to keep an eye on e4 and g4. Right? Not allowing this knight to activate. Actually, here, white has knight takes f7. King takes f7 and queen takes h6. It's, should be winning, yeah. Okay, there's rook g8 and then bishop e5. Too much activity, you're keeping an eye on e4, attack f6, threatening h5, yeah. f4, okay, she was probably going for f5 here. Takes, takes, rook to e1, knight to e4, takes on a4, bishop. A6, stronger with bishop c6 to the king. Bishop a6, f5, knight into f3 here. Black could have player, rook takes g3. Okay, king takes g3, and then rook takes e5. But then the enormous pressure, yeah, with seconds to play. Yeah, Chukali, Chulakido was very low on time here. And especially when you're playing a young. Girl, yeah, this added pressure, yeah, <laughs> because you are actually expected to win against a younger player because you have more experience. But knight f3. But what I like in this game is the ending. It takes f3, king h2, takes e1, takes an e1, rook e3, queen a1, and white has already equalized. So king to g1, takes and g6, takes. Into d1, into d7, d8, d3, we need to check. All right, now we're going to that one. The opposite colored bishop. Rook takes e2, takes on d3, takes on d3, takes on d2, bishop e1. Okay, white is very alert. She has to take b4 and keep an eye on e2 as well. Bishop d5, a5, pass one as a push, takes, king g3. Improving the position of the king in the end game, you have to activate your king. Takes on b4, king f4, and king e4, centralized king, h5, g5, right? Bishop into a6, king 
King d4, King f5, Bishop e1, Black wanted more. She played King f4, King f d5, King f3. So Black is planning to go King g2, King f1, King e5, King f6. Bishop c3, then Bishop protects pawn in g6. Alice went for a6 to distract the bishop. Uh, now the mistake. Okay, obviously, it's, oh, it's a pawn and it's two steps away from promotion, but it's actually a mistake. Black could hold the game here with e1, queen, yep. Bishop takes e1, takes an e1. There's a big difference. You push the pawn, bishop e4. This is force. Promote, takes, and takes. Now king f2. The king is closer to this pawn. Attacking the pawns from behind. Takes, and then king to g3. Now push. Now king to f4, or you can, so that the king can go g5. King h6, for example, bishop d5. If h5, you stay behind. g7, okay, bishop f7. Forcing the king to go h7, you take on h5, promote, takes, and then it's a draw. Now, what's the difference in the game? She went for bishop takes a6. Now, very big difference. Takes, queen takes, takes, king takes h5. King f2, g6. See the difference? If let's say you go for king to g3, white gets this important g5 square. If we go back earlier, look at this important g5 square, right? Going back earlier with king g3, king f4, yeah, we get that g5 square. We take away, we restrict white to get on. So king h6, we have bishop to d5, and then we attack the pawn from high. But in the game, what happened? Too late, right? If you go king g3, there's king g5, and then the pawn will just push h5, h6, h7. So g7, bishop, king g5, the important square. Well, the young girl, 12-year-old young girl, is showing her maturity here. Yeah? And it only shows that she's working on her chest. And I hope that this game also inspires everyone to work on this, especially the end game. Okay, because chess mastery is through the end game. Yeah? If you want to master chess, you have to have that knowledge of the ending, nothing else. H5, king e5, h6, now threatening h7, to g8, king g6, king e6, h7, and white wins. That was a good win by the young Alice, Alice in Wonderland. It was, you know, okay, she was losing somewhere, but this endgame technique is the most important thing in the game to show you guys. She's 12 and she knows her endgame. Right? Beating an iron. And in the second game, she also played well. And uh, he even, she even sacrificed an exchange in the opening. All right. Typical of uh, games by Ikaru Nakamura. Okay, with uh, the screen's gambit accepted, yeah. Right. Black sacrifices the exchange, but uh, the strong points. Okay, King seven. And in the end, White lost the bishop on a five. And also, I, I like her maturity here. She just needs a draw to, to go to the next round, and you just play queen c6 and bishop c6 in b5. Yeah? And then now, here, using the bishop, takes a5. 
But the highlight of the game was her first game with the end game. She was losing in the middle game, but she was able to recover and play a strong end game, especially with this opposite color in Kushan. And uh, she never made me sleep for early. <laughs> I was glued to my seat. I was like, oh my God, this needs to be uh, covered. Yeah. A young sensation, a young kid. Okay, she, she is a world youth champion for under 10 and under 12. So she definitely is a young, talented girl. And she, she has a bright future ahead of her. And I hope this video will inspire our young kids to, to do better in their chest, yeah? to work on their chest, especially the end game. All right, that's about it, everyone. This is Coach Oliver. Stay safe and bye-bye.